Hi, everyone. Welcome to this AMA between Creator DAO and B Protocol. How's it going, guys? Yeah, um, great. Thanks for having us. Yeah, welcome. Welcome. We got here, we got Adam, we got Eitan, and we got Yaron. So we want to find out a bit more about uh, we want to find out a bit more about B Protocol. So we're going to be going into some questions today. Now, question number one, we'll just start with you guys. Who's the team for B Protocol and what's your background? I guess we can we can start with you, Yaron. Yeah, so yeah, hi guys. Uh, yeah, I, I'm Yaron. Uh, I'm the founder, lead developer uh, of B Protocol. Uh, previous to B Protocol, I was CTO of Kyber Network already in 2017. Prior to that, uh, I started with Ethereum around 2016. I was doing a PhD in computer science, and then together with the Kyber founding team, we had this kind of academic project uh, where we built a decentralized mining pool. Uh, it was called Smart Pool back then, uh, 2016. Uh, it even mined a few Ethereum blocks at the time. Uh, in 2017, you know, around the first hype uh, of, of crypto and blockchain, uh, we started Kyber Network. I was CTO there until 2020. Uh, you know, it was kind of the first DEX and one of the earliest DeFi uh, application before the DeFi uh, term it was even coined. Uh, in Kyber, you know, we did a lot of on-chain market making. Uh, we did the Wrapped Bitcoin initiative. We designed all the Ethereum smart contract and implement them. Uh, so that was, uh, you know, like kind of my experience prior to B Protocol. Uh, after Kyber, uh, we were consulting to few private companies about liquidation bots in DeFi and also in CeFi. This is where we actually realized, you know, like how DeFi liquidations are broken in so many ways, uh, and you know how they should, how they could be improved by, you know, kind of borrowing some ideas from the CeFi space and add to that, you know, kind of the democracy and decentralized and permissionless nature of DeFi. Uh, so, so the idea, you know, like first came to mind on Black Thursday events in March of 2020, where, you know, uh, liquidation in DeFi in that day uh, really uh, sucked, and, you know, there were, like, there were like a lot of losses on MakerDAO because of that. Uh, and we realized that, you know, no one is taking care of liquidations when they will be really needed, only the easy one are taking care of. Uh, so this is when, you know, we decided we need to make, you know, liquidations more, more uh, decentralized, more kind of democratic, if you will. Uh, and we started to build the permissionless backstop liquidity protocol. Nice. I see on here that you desc you're described as the brain, the muscles and the vision. So we're going to move on next to Eitan. It's like once you have the brains, the muscles and the vision, what's left for Eitan? Yeah, not much. No, uh, joking. Uh, doing anything, uh, you know, not uh, not related to code uh, is mostly on my side. Uh, my journey in crypto started in early 2014. Uh, I was one of the co-founders of Lazuz. It was uh, an early stage uh, decentralized carpooling application on top of the Bitcoin blockchain back then, before Ethereum went live. Uh, we used Mastercoin, OmniLayer, things that have you know, been uh, kind of, uh, I don't know, history in a way. Fast, you know, be you become a dinosaur very, very fast in uh, in crypto. Um, and I met Yaron in 2017 um, when I was uh, leading a, a POC with the Toyota Research Institute in the U.S. They were uh, trying to figure out how. Um, mobility services and blockchain, uh, mainly Ethereum, can uh, go hand in hand. And that's when I met Yaron. And I joined B Protocol about a year ago. And I'm leading the growth, the ecosystem development, as I mentioned, everything, most of the things that are not you know, code related. Very nice. Anyone else on the team? Well, Adam is here. Adam is one of the growth squad members uh, who's leading the, um, the growth squad of B Protocol. Um, we'll probably touch that later. 
Yeah, yeah. Nice. So beside that, and so, so we also have Shmuel, who is a full stack developer. Yeah. Uh, also, you know, helping with the development. Other than that, we have also an advisory board. So we have Sandeep, uh, who is the co-founder of Polygon. Uh, we have Marion, Mariano Conti, uh, you know, ex MakerDAO, uh, head of contract. Uh, and we have Ori, uh, who is a veteran algo trading and helps with all the, you know, like developing uh, the trading formula and risk analysis, et cetera. Amazing. Now, before we get into what B Protocol is exactly, why are you guys called B Protocol? What's the meaning of the name? So basically, B stands for backstop. Um, so it's backstop protocol which sounds maybe a bit too long when we started. Um, in Insight, maybe we should have used the full name, but uh, kind of got stuck with the B protocol. Um, so B is just stand for backstop. Backstop is a very common um, um, practice in TradFi, in traditional finance, and in, uh, and in CIFA, you can find a backstop in any exchanges. Um, you know, on, on Binance, on FTX, Bybit, all of them will have a backstop program. Um, and as Elon mentioned, you know, B protocol is basically taking that into, into DeFi. Um, so in a nutshell, B protocol is, you know, we democratize the liquidation systems in DeFi using a backstop liquidity protocol, um, to unlock better capital efficiency in the entire DeFi ecosystem. That's, that's basically our, our aim, our goal. Amazing. Anyone else want to speak deeper about what Beak Protocol is? Um, well, I, I can just keep on, you know, giving maybe the main benefits, I think, for the, you know, for the main users kind of, you know, what, what you can what you can do with Beak Protocol that you couldn't before. Um, I think the one of the leading points is that, you know, with Beak Protocol, um, regular users can actually take part and of course profit from DeFi liquidation, something, um, you know, liquidation is kind of a, a walled garden in many ways, not available for definitely not for the non-tech uh, users and even for the, um, for the tech users, the tech users, uh, it's still, if you look in, you know, in CeFi, it's kind of only for uh, the inner circles um you can't get really part of the of the backstop programs in any of the of any of the of the platforms um the other benefits is basically of course for the lending platforms themselves we get a stronger um safety net with a dedicated backstop liquidity we'll touch on that i assume later as we'll just dive deeper into what a backstop is actually is and how it works and you know kind of the the, the cherry on top is that lending platform users can enjoy higher capital efficiency, which is kind of the biggest problem with, with DeFi today as we see it. that capital efficiency, when you compare it to CeFi, centralized finance systems, even with crypto, I'm not talking, of course, you know, when talking about crypto, um, you know, where you can get X hundred leverage on funds when in DeFi we get, you know, up to, X3 to X5 in most of the lending platforms. Um, so this is something that with a dedicated backstop, lending platforms can now offer higher uh, capital efficiency, higher leverage, better collateral factors um, to their users. So uh, this is something that can't happen without uh, a proper liquidation system. The liquidation system, the current liquidation system that DeFi offers um, just doesn't allow it. Great. So I just wanted to say, is it safe to say that B protocol is a win-win for all, both for the platform and for users? Well, we definitely want to think about it like that. Yeah, I think uh, that's that's the exact scenario we are creating. It sounds like that to me. Amazing. Well, what are the main problems that B protocol is trying to solve? So there are a few uh, problems that B protocol solves, and I probably the main one is you know unlocking better capital efficiency for DeFi. Um, you know, what B protocol does is we offer committed and transparent liquidity for liquidations. And by doing that, we enable the lending platforms themselves. They want that they won't need to actually maintain these inefficient collateral factors that they currently need. Today, most, most lending platforms offer up to X5 
Uh, leverage meaning usually a collateral factor of 75% for most um, for most assets. And by by giving, you know, by doing this uh, dedicated backstop, uh, having liquidity, a liquidity that is dedicated just for liquidation, um, we enable the lending platforms to move from these 66 to 75% collateral factors uh, up to 90 to 95% collateral factors. Um, which reflects leverage of up to X20 compared to the X5 that is currently offered. Um, and we believe, you know, capital efficiency is one of the main factors for any financial uh, system to flourish. Um, so this is probably one of the main problems that, you know, DeFi needs to kind of um, solve, you know, to scale into the CFI um, levels. Um, so I think that's probably one of the main the main problems that B protocol solves. The second one is you know by having a, a democratized liquidation system like B protocol offers is something that aligns with the DeFi uh, ethos. So it's you know you will find a backstop program as I mentioned you know on most of um, you know exchanges uh, in in crypto, but it's kind of a walled garden and you now. The regular users cannot enjoy this kind of lucrative business of liquidations and the profits that it entails. Um, so B protocol by pulling users' funds together that are dedicated for liquidations uh, is taking this extra step into democratizing the liquidation systems uh, for the whole DeFi uh, ecosystem. So I think this is a kind of um, a second a second thing. And the third one is fighting MEV. Um, mining ex miners' extracted value uh, is probably one of the most important and dangerous threats blockchains currently uh, facing. And by creating a dedicated pool that opens to anyone, anyone can participate. And the lending platforms kind of giving it a priority for the liquidations without giving up their kind of decentralized um, piece um, is. Um, Taking out the gas wars out of the equation, so less um, less MEV issues um, for DeFi. Elon, do you want to maybe give another take on on the MEV part? Yeah, yeah, sure. So one of the biggest issues you know, lending platform have now is that they kind of force traders to optimize uh, on MEV, optimize on developing, you know, for sophisticated front running bots, minimize their gas costs, uh, etc. Now, th this is all nice and well, but you know, the result is that everyone, uh, you know, optimized for flash loans. No one is optimized uh, for the trading aspect. No one is optimized uh, towards big liquidations that are, that are hard to do. Uh, and it was the exact problem, you know, with Black Thursday, where, you know, the liquidation was hard and gas was high, so no one did it. You know, ever since Black Thursday, so lending platforms are trying to uh, introduce new ways to liquid uh, for liquidations, but they all rely kind of, of you know, gas optimizations and winner take it all approach. Uh, which eventually boils down to relying on DEX liquidity, uh, which is in turn very inefficient uh, because of, you know, automatic market maker practices, which make liquidity itself a bit inefficient. Uh, and this is why, you know, despite having billions in liquidity, uh, lending platforms must say, you know, conservative and offer very poor capital efficiency because they da just don't have any no guarantees or confidence that liquidations will actually happen as ex as planned. Uh, so what we do, you know, we solve kind of the uh, two of these biggest problems, namely, you know, so we, we solve the MEV issue by offering a new and, you know, kind of more democratic, more uh, decentralized and distributed protocol uh, where the profits are shared with the users rather than the miners. So this is one aspect. The other aspect is that we provide on-chain transparency on the available uh, liquidity towards liquidations, uh, and it turns it also 
kind of increase the amount of liquidity that is available for liquidations. So it's kind of win-win, uh, you know, in, in both of these aspects. Where the losing parts are mainly so one or miners who might be able to get, you know, a bit lower MEV. Uh, and another loser is, you know, kind of flash bots who only optimize, you know, optimize for front running rather than actual trading and actual liquidity provision. All right. So let's go a bit deeper. How does B protocol actually work? I'll share a screen alone and you can. Yeah, and, and, and maybe before how BB protocol works, maybe how liquidation works in DeFi, because this is also like kind of, you know, DeFi uh, dirty secret. Uh, so, so, so in general, you know, not only in DeFi, you have lending platform, people provide, for example, uh, ETH collateral and borrow USDC. Uh, to certain amount, and then when if Ethereum value goes down, uh, their uh, their borrow might become under collateralized. So before that, a liquidation should happen. And what currently happens in liquidations is that the platform rely on some, uh, you know, typically some flash loan boat will just repay uh, the user debt. Uh, in return, we'll get some of the collateral uh, with some discount. Uh, typically, we'll just trade it directly on Uniswap. Uh, and this is kind of how the liquidation cycle ends. Uh, however, you know, traditionally, or you know, what we see now uh, is that, you know, th th this kind of approach will not be able to scale to, say, $100 million of liquidation per hour where, you know, in CFI, in Binance Futures, et cetera, we see even 200, 300 million dollars of liquidations. So we offer a new architecture uh, in our way, and maybe if you can share the screen. So, so, so in, the, in the new architecture, a user provide capital upfront, they pull, the fun, they pull their funds in a, in a liquidity pool, uh, and whenever these funds are not used for liquidations, they are deposited elsewhere and provide, you know, some yield for the users. For example, they can be, can be deposited in Wi-Fi or any other yield-bearing platform. Then only when liquidation is needed, uh, then these funds uh, are taken away from this idle platform. Uh, the liquidation is done by repaying the under collateralized loan uh, with these funds. And now, say, if we started with DAI, uh, we end up with some ETH instead of DAI. Uh, so the next step in order to complete the cycle uh, is to sell this ETH. Now, we don't sell it in, in one shot, uh, but instead the protocol offer it for sale uh, according to a market price plus some discount, uh, which depends on the market conditions, on the, invent on the inventory imbalance we have, et cetera, uh, where the algorithm is somewhat expire, uh, inspired uh, by Curve Finance formula. Uh, so what, and, and, and eventually, now that we have this backstop, you know, back, backstop cubes, uh, so platforms simply let us uh, be the uh, kind of uh, default liquidation mechanism. Uh, so, for example, MakerDAO already voted uh, to include us in uh, some of their collaterals. Uh, we had the uh, MIM Magic Internet Money, which with their spell governance token vote on, voting on us. Uh, and we have more that kind of in a process, you know, to onboard us. Uh, so, yeah, basically, this is how. The, how the entire liquidation cycle works with B protocol. Now, what stage is the project development currently at? So the project is live for over a year now. Uh, we have a TVL of uh, a bit more than $100 million, currently only on Ethereum L1. Uh, the community launched a governance token almost six months ago. Uh, so the 
<clears throat> so the protocol is fully, you know, kind of controlled by the community. We had an earlier version, you know, where Allah, which supports kind of MakerDAO and compound deposits, uh, which has around six, $80 million of TVL at this point. Uh, and now we are focusing more on the backstop aspect of it. So we have a live integration with Liquidity. Uh, also, by the way, kind of connects also with the Pickle uh, finance. Uh, in, in a separate integration. Uh, so that's that's kind of the state that we are now. And, and move, moving forward, so as I mentioned, uh, at this point, three additional uh, DAOs voted uh, to include us as their liquidation mechanism, which are B0X, MakerDAO, uh, and MIM. Uh, so right now, the, develop, the development team is mostly focused around that. Other than that, you know, we had kind of other platforms that integrated us or are working to integrate, it, integrate with us. Uh, most notably recently, we got connected with uh, Instadap, uh, who is offering an interface uh, for our backstop deposits. Uh, previously, we had the DeFi Saver MPH88. Uh, Harvest are working on some integration with us. Probably also M stable uh, and yeah, actually, I don't know. Are there any more integrations you have in mind? So, in the last year, you know, so like one font is to integrate with other DAOs and protocol. The other fonts are integrating, you know, kind of as a ready product uh, into other strategies of uh, DeFi. Yeah, there, there are, um, you know, we are in discussions, what Yaron mentioned, the kind of, you know, whatever already went through the pipeline and got voted, um, <clears throat> sorry, by, uh, by different DAOs, but there are, you know, we are discussing all the time with more and more protocols, both on Ethereum, but also on, you know, Polygon B0X that Yaron mentioned uh, is a Polygon integration. Um, we're discussing with uh, BSC, with Binance uh, uh, Smart Chain uh, protocols as well. Um, so yeah, there's kind of lots of things happening. Um, you know, still not fully um, ripe for um, you know disclosing, but um, lots of, lots of integrations are, um, are are being discussed. Can I ask a question about this? Sure. So. When you work with a protocol, like when you start talking with a new protocol, like what is that? What does that look like? How does how does that work? Like what? How how does the process go? Like is it a negotiation? Is it you like um, giving them giving them information? You talk like technical details, and then like what do, what does a deal with a protocol actually look like? And how does the money work on with that? Like, do they pay you or do you? Like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's a great question, and you know, the, the process itself kind of vary, you know, like between different protocols. Each has its own DAO, its own kind of, you know, voting process, etc. Uh, but after speaking, you know, the process is that we first present it to the community, try to see if there's attraction, you know, before doing the actual work. Their DAO typically vote on some. You know, declara declaration of intent. Uh, in, and in some cases, it already votes on some kind of liquidity mining program uh, for after the integration is ready. Then we work on the actual code. In, in terms of kind of the, the business part of it, so, so it's all DAO to DAO, sort of speaking. But, you know, eventually our goal is, you know, we. Uh, there's a lot of value in the actual liquidations, right? Which obviously most of them will go uh, to the users, right? To the liquidity providers. Uh, but, but eventually our DAO, you know, might decide at certain point to take some fees from the liquidation process itself. Uh, so at this point, you know, this is all DeFi, all DAO to DAO. So, you know, both sides are aware of what governance decision can be taken by each side. So it's not really like, you know, like a signed contract or anything of that sort, but more like DAO votes. And we just, you know, each DAO has full information on the what the other DAO can and cannot control. 
Also, Dimes, I think it's, uh, you know, it usually depends, of course, if that was something that we approached out for uh, for a specific protocol or did they approach us, uh, how much they are familiar with what B protocol is doing. Liquidations is kind of a gray area in many ways where, uh, you know, um, so many times it's kind of, if we speak with the non-technical uh, team members kind of going through the liquidation process, how it works, what we actually change, um, what might be needed, you know, what changes would be needed for the integration and so on. And yeah, and, and from there, as Jan mentioned, you know, it's part of, you know, the specific um, assets that are uh, going to be usually tested as kind of an, you know, an initial uh, integration um, and yeah, and, and taking it from there. And then the actual technical integration is taking place, which can take up to a few weeks or more. So on the on the community development side, what does your community look like at the moment? Um, it's a pretty active community, I have to admit. Um, most of the discussions that are, help are um, happening on, on Discord. We have also a forum, which is more for the governance proposals. Um, just lately, about six weeks ago, the DAO has voted for uh, the first uh, growth squad, um, kind of a team of community members who are leading the growth and the marketing of B Protocol. Um, so they were funded with 25k B Pro um, to kind of help promoting, you know, B Protocol, its vision, uh, its awareness in the broader DeFi uh, community. Yeah, so it's kind of it's it's an initial step or another step at least, you know, to take um the decentralization of B protocol functionalities into the next level. Um till now it's kind of uh I think it proved itself. So yeah. So XRP has the XRP army, Chainlink has the Link Marines. Is your community called the Growth Squad or that's just a small elite fraction of it? No, so the growth squad is just you know, this kind of um, few members who are focused on the growth. We still do not have a name for uh, you know for the defenders of uh, of DeFi, but um, yeah, um, names are still to be made. The word uh, worker bees pops into my head right now, but it's a bit cringe. We'll think of a better one later. What about like the? Um... In baseball, you have like the catcher or something like this, like the guy who stands behind the batter, catches the. Um, you couldn't just call yourself backstoppers or something like that. No, no, no. <laughs> we'll try to come up with something. We'll brainstorm. Great. Now, what are the benefits a user gets from using B Protocol rather than any other front end of Liquidity? Um, so liquidity protocol is kind of a unique use case, I think, in that it doesn't have uh, its own front end. Users need to pick their front end. Um, there's a list of front ends that users can just pick one to, inter to interact with the protocol. Uh, and B protocol uh, integrated with liquidity um, to do that exact same rebalance uh, part of the liquidation and and I'll explain um, what B protocol does we automate the rebalancing part of the liquidation and liquidity so I liquidity is the first I think it's the first uh, protocol that has uh, kind of a backstop what they call a stability pool where users can deposit their LUSD liquidity is the LUSD the creators of LUSD a stable coin uh, which people can, users can mint um, for their uh, ETH collateral uh, in, a, in a liquidity trove, something similar to the maker's vault. Uh, so there's only one single uh, collateral, which is uh, ETH. And those LUSD that are being deposited in the stability pool are used as liquidity for liquidations. Um, but, you know, so once liquidation happens and there's a kind of a, unsafe uh, trove that is needed to be liquidated. The, uh, the LUSD debt is being paid uh, by from the funds from the from the stability pool and the ETH is being um, taken into the stability into the stability pool. And what B protocol does is we automate this um, reselling this ETH back into LUSD and deposit it back into the into the uh, stability pool. 
Um, and that creates kind of an optimal um, auto, auto compounding of the profits uh, for users as we optimize their LQTY re rewards. Uh, Liquid has this LQTY token, which they give as rewards for LUSD um, depositors. And by just automatically selling this ETH uh, from the liquidations back to LUSD, we kind of automate that and give users the ability to kind of put their LUSD in the stability pool and kind of forget about it. They don't need to rebalance their position. They don't need to have these um, gas costs to rebalance, to sell the ETH back to LUSD and redeposit it into the stability pool as the ETH part is not uh, occurring any um, LQTY rewards. So they also do not optimize their um, um, their LQTY rewards as well as long as their uh, ETH uh, is, is part of their uh, position is held in ETH. So B protocol is basically doing all that automatically um, through this exact diagram that we showed before, um, rebalancing, meaning reselling the ETH into LUSD and deposit it into the pool. Um, so yeah, that's kind of um, both... Uh, non-headache thing and gas cost saving um, and yeah, gaming uh, of great APYs. Yes, so m m maybe to summarize the process a bit, so liquidity protocol currently offer, you know, typically for bots and other traders, you know, like advanced traders to enjoy, you know, their liquidation proceeds uh, and some liquidity mining, which is typically 15% APY. Uh, but in order to optimize it, a typical user will have to develop and maintain its own boat, uh, spend a lot uh, in gas for the optimization process. And as Eitan mentioned, what we basically offer to the user here is fully automated, fully on-chain algorithm, uh, which allow them to give you know around 15% of passive uh, APY on, on the LQTY that liquidity offers. So basically, we remove the needs you know, for bots. Uh, and a lot of gas saving as well. Maybe also. Sorry, can I jump in here? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I've got I've got quite a bit of experience with uh, liquidity and I kind of understand what's going on. Um, first of all, um, because they, you use the stability pool to to liquidate, right? There's there's not a need for a whole bunch of like funds to to make liquidations, right? So is B protocol not actually like really putting any funds? into the actual liquidation are they just supplying no. the so the stability pool or and then also no, no. farming farming and so forth yes yeah, so, so what liquidity protocol kind of offer is for users to deposit to the stability pool but then they have to maintain their position right every time there is a liquidation some of their lusd uh, is being converted to is now, if they want to auto compound uh, the rewards, they have to manually or but with you know via some bot has to sell it back to ETH uh, and deposit it back, which of course consumes a lot of gas. So in our integration to the stability pool via B protocol, and then you know it's fully passive process from their side, and also it contributes to the stability of you know of liquidity eventually because you know they have this kind of guarantee that. After every liquidation, eventually, you know, the ETH is being converted back to LUSD uh, and, you know, the LUSD backstop uh, maintain its size. Okay, I think I got understand. So you're basically yield aggregating on the stability pool yeah. for people. Yeah. Um, I, have a, I have a couple more questions about it. Are you, are you using the are you market selling the eth for lusd and then putting it back into the stability pool or are you using the eth to mint more lusd to add to the stability pool no no so, so we use the ETH. so <laughs> no, not sure what you mean by market make i mean yeah eventually this is like is market sold. sell like sell it like yeah 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 so so we, we market sell it according to a special algorithm and i don't know if you still see the screen uh, that Ethan is sharing uh, but we have, a, we have a formula to decide on, mm. on the selling price, uh, which also depends on the market price that is provided by Chainlink in this example. And, and then, so, so basically we offer it, we sell it according to market price, but you know, if we have a lot of ease, uh, then we will offer a bigger discount on market price. If, if we have very uh, little ease, we will offer a smaller discount. 
etc. So it's kind of an algorithm to sell the ETH uh, back to LUSD, and then whenever someone buys it, uh, it is automatically uh, being deposited into the pool. Okay, I got one more question. Is liquidity able to reduce their LTQY? I think that's right. LQTY? LQTY rewards because you guys are doing some sort of incentivization on your end? Yeah, no, so I, I, I think for the long run, yeah, for the long run, it, it's not really about the reward because they're, you know, the protocol is immutable. But actually, for the long run, they are reducing the LQTY reward, like in, you know, four years period. Uh, and, and then they, will, they might face a real issue of, you know, what is the incentive uh, to deposit into the stability pool? So right now they have a lot of liquidity because of the big incentive, but over time this incentive uh, is being halved, you know, like every year or so. So right now what they have is not very efficient uh, system, and with us, you know, they also believe that the system became become more efficient, uh, and because it is more efficient, uh, they could secure more with a given amount uh, of LUSD staking. So, yeah, so this is basically how, you know, we help liquidity in the long run. And this is also what we build for other protocols now, such as Maker uh, and Meme. Yeah. Yeah, this, this makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm sorry, I got one more last question. Um, are you guys adding incentives to this this use case? Like if, if someone were to want to decide to leave and take advantage of your... Uh, your auto, auto automatic, like, yield aggregating, I want to call it that, but maybe there's a different word for it, you know. Farming the rewards for them, compounding for them, auto compounding, let's call it that. Is there any incentive on your end? Like, are you guys giving any governance tokens or anything for this? I'm sorry if you've already answered this question. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So, so yeah, first of all, yeah, I mean, right now we have a liquidity mining program, uh, and maybe this will also be a separate uh, question, but yeah, we have a liquidity mining program. Uh, and yeah, and that's on top of the benefit of, you know, being, being able to passively accumulate uh, liquidities uh, reward. But yeah, we have, currently we have also our, our own liquidity mining program. Basically, currently, currently users mm-hmm. are, um, since we've been integrated with InstaDAP uh, last week, uh, users can actually open a trove on InstaDAP um you know to mint lusd to gain some uh inst rewards from instadap uh and then deposit it into the uh, uh liquidity stability pool via b protocol on, on instadap uh to gain both the lqty rewards from liquidity and the b pro tokens from the liquidity mining uh program from b from b protocol um and all of that through the Insta, instadap interface so this is kind of a multi, um, multi rewards, I don't know how to call it, a program uh, on, you know, using InstaDAP, Liquidity, and B protocol. That is great. Uh, I'm sorry, I have one more last question. I, I promise it's the last one. Is there any fees taken out of the, the yield from the ETH? Like when you guys take the ETH, market sell it, Back for LSD, do you guys take any cut of yeah. that? So, so right now the fees are zero, but the governance vote could change it up to at most 1%. So, so right now the profits from the liquidations are 10%. Uh, our governance might decide to take up to 1%, and this is kind of you know hard-coded limitation in the protocol. Uh, but right now it is zero. Can you guys speak a bit about the B protocol long-term vision and plans for multi-chain? So I think in you know in general the vision is you know to provide a, a backstop primitive uh, for uh, for DeFi across multi chains and multi layers and as we mentioned you know currently we are working we are working uh, on on uh, layer one on Ethereum uh, but. There is in a pipeline uh, a polygon integration with B0X and other chains as well as uh, as Binance Chain uh, and Phantom. So yeah, that's uh, that's to come. Still yeah, to come. I, yeah, I think more generally, you know, like the way Uniswap, you know, kind of democratized the market making uh, backstop primitive. Uh, sorry, the market making DeFi primitive. Uh, so, you know, so our goal is, first of all, to introduce, you know, the DeFi primitive uh, of, of backstop 
Yeah, first of all, you know, to, p- people should first recognize that this is a different primitive than market making because, you know, right now people kind of treating uh, trading and market making as the same primitive, w- which is true, you know, and things are very unoptimized, very inefficient, but eventually now that DeFi is becoming more mature and people are optimizing, you know, towards different goals. For example, Uniswap V3 is highly unoptimized. Uh, for backstop so we want to people to recognize the need for this backstop then to kind of democratize it and you know kind of the vision in the future is that as easily as people you know just launch a new uniswap pool for market making they could launch you know a new backstop pool uh, for some lending platform eventually this is the long-term vision of what we are doing now and for platforms, you guys are looking to stay on EVM compatible blockchains. Yeah, at this point, yes. But you know, like in the future, we go wherever uh, wherever they need us. But, you know. Cardano. Uh, so so no, <laughs> we are not acti- we are not actively researching Cardano right now. But uh, no, so so you know, so so right now, all the plans we have are on EVM compatible. You know, in the future we will see. But yeah, right now we are only EVM compatible. Very nice. Now, you touched on it a bit earlier when Caesar asked the question about incentives, but what's the current status of your incentives, your liquidity mining program, and what kind of programs do you have coming up? I read something about an UMA liquidity mining program. Um, yeah, so um, there is a, the second liquidity mining program is currently running, ending in about uh, a month and a half from now. Uh, and after that, um, we'll see if there will be probably another another program. Um, but currently what we've been doing, we partnered with UMA on their uh, KPI options program. Um, how it works basically is that the DAO, the B protocol DAO has deposited 90K B pros into um, UMA KPI option vault uh, and minted 30K UB pro, which is kind of a UMA uh, B pro token. It's a, it's an ERC20 um, that users are being re- rewarded uh, every block um, for using the protocol. So if you deposit LUSD into Liquity um, through B protocol, you're gaining um, your UB Pro. And the KPI that DAO has voted about uh, upon was um, reaching 150 million TVL. So if we reach or cross, of course, the 150 million TVL at the end of the program, um, each UB Pro, UB Pro token will be redeemable for uh, three B Pros. So that will be, um, you know, the full 90K B Pros will be distributed to users. But if the community, you know, if, if we won't get to the 150 million TVL, um, each UB Pro token will be redeemable for only one B Pro. So there will be only 30K B Pro distributed and the remaining 60K, 60K will be um, you know, re- refunded back to the DAO reserve. Um, so it's kind of aligning incentives for the whole community to get kind of, you know, under this uh, KPI pushing um, the TVL uh, of B protocol um, a bit higher. We started from around, I think it was 70 or 80 million, now reaching 110. And yes, yeah, still about six, seven weeks to go. So um, we hope, you know, we'll get there. Now, some people might say what you guys are doing is very similar to what Keeper Dow is doing. How do you address those thoughts, and uh, and what are the main differences between you and them? Yeah, so, so, so I think you know, like historically, what Keeper Dow are trying to do, so so that they're, they're trying to kind of extract the minor value and just give it away to the users, uh, which is nice and can be, I don't know, potentially nice, I don't know, revenue stream or something of that sort. What we are trying to do here is to extract the MEV, not only, you know, to capture this profit ourselves, because eventually for a lending platform, you don't really care if the protocol get it or if the miner get it. Here we are trying to extract the MEV in order to make DeFi, you know, most, more stable, uh, to actually improve lending platform, you know, make things more uh, democratic, etc., allow higher capital efficiency. So in that regard, you know, the two visions are very different. Uh, concretely, also, we are now focusing on, you know, two different aspects. KeeperDAO 
I don't know, the recent development was actually something very similar to what we did like a year ago, which is no longer our main focus. And, you know, we, are, we since then moved to more, you know, user-based liquidity. So this is how we see the two. So, you know, they, they are kind of try to extract the MEV to themselves uh, while we try to improve the entire ecosystem, you know, by removing the MEV factor. And what about other potential competitors or similar platforms? So, so, so I, think, I think mainly, you know, you, are, you, are, you are, have a lot of kind of MEV specific applications. Uh, but, but again, it's mostly about profits and not about, you know, so it's not only about MEV, it's mostly about backstop as a primitive. So I think, you know, here there's not like a direct competition. One would argue that, okay, what if Uniswap will become more efficient? So, you know, so for that, usually, or, you know, what we have in mind is that, again, people are kind of confused between market making and backstop, which in high scale is very, you know, it's not the same. So people say, okay, so DeFi right now, DeFi liquidity is inefficient, but, you know, it gets more and more efficient over time. So the point is that, you know, the more efficient market making, the more efficient DEXs are, you know, so the less efficient they are uh, to facilitate liquidations. So in that regard, we don't really have direct competitors. You know, there's also always the concern or, you know, the possibility that protocols will decide to do it, you know, kind of themselves. And here the added value that we add is that, you know, eventually the vision here is to have kind of a big backstop you know, one backstop to all or, or most of the DeFi platforms. And there, you know, you kind of get advantage to you, to how big you are, right? So it will be much more efficient if multiple platforms will share the same backstop rather than each will develop its own. So, so these are kind of, you know, the competitions we have either, you know, MEV specific applications who only focus MEV. We have liquidity protocols, who doesn't really uh, optimize liquidations. Uh, and we have kind of in-house competition, but you know, here again, it's much more efficient if you have a dedicated backstop primitive rather than each, each platform has to implement its own backstop. And I think, Elon, also it's worth mentioning that it's the same like it happens in, in CFI where a lot of criticism is coming that you know, liquidations are being handled in-house uh, in a way, you know, um, and giving kind of the cat to, um, to keep, you know, to watch, to watch over the milk and letting the lending platforms themselves, uh, kind of, um, be in charge on, you know, on, on the liquidation processes, just like they are doing it currently where they outsource the liquidation, um, you know, to other third parties, bot operators and, and so on uh, over the entire Ethereum network. Um, the backstop solution basically offers kind of um, a, a new approach to do that. So um, uh, a, a better approach that can actually scale the whole ecosystem, um, which is something that is still not available by any other protocol. So I wanted to ask something about the, or I just wanted to get into the B Pro token, your the token of the the B Protocol platform. But you guys talked about it a bit before with the liquidity mining program and also with Caesar's question. Is there anything else you guys want to add about the B Pro token? Maybe just worth mentioning, you know, that B Protocol since day one, since we launched on Mainnet, uh, was owned by its users. Uh, we had this uh, still having um, uh, a metric, a C score and M score uh, in, you know, uh, within the protocol. And six months after we launched, we had this governance vote and the users voted on, you know, tokenizing the governance. And then the B probe token kind of uh, came, came into life. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, it's uh, it's kind of it's a pure governance token, and yeah, not not much to say about it. What about challenges that you guys face, and how are you going to confront those challenges? Uh, I think one of the main challenges, you know, kind of uh, so challenges, but also part of the rewarding part. So integrating with other protocols is not very easy. It's very time consuming. 
it also require you know kind of a lot of knowledge you know like kind of how to navigate between the different communities you know how to make them vote in your favor etc so, so this is you know it's kind of a challenge on the one hand but on the other hand it's very rewarding because you know once you once you are in uh, it's very hard for others to compete you so a, lo- a lot of our daily work is talking with other protocols and then talking with their DAOs, you know, uh, publishing information for their communities, uh, for their stockholders, etc. So I think that's, you know, like a big part of the challenges we have and, you know, like a, a lot of the work we have. And, and then we see it also on the other side, you know, we see protocols that come to us and, you know, offer us integration, you know, offer us to integrate their product, for example. Uh, so I think, you know, overall DAOs or interacting with DAOs, you know, it's, 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 it's a big challenge on the one hand, but on the other hand, you know, this will likely be the future and it's very rewarding, you know, once you're, once you're able to get it done. Now, Recently, there have been a lot of different exploits in DeFi, and that's probably a main concern of the people at B Protocol, the team. What are you guys doing? What kind of measures have you taken to make sure that your smart contracts are secure? Yeah, so, so of course, our smart contracts are you know, f- uh, fully audited. Uh, also, we are live for over a year. You know, we saw over 100 million of TVL. Uh, other than that, you know, we have bug bounty on the of over in Munify of over hundred thousand dollars. We also have a community bug bounty, which you know kind of depends on the token value, but at peak it was around half a million dollar of bug bounty. So so basically, you know, just follow follow the you know best practice book. You know, I, I do most of the smart contract development. I'm been to the space for over four or five years. Was doing auditing myself you know, get, getting bug bounties myself, etc. Uh, so, yeah, so, you know, uh, good developers, we send everything to audit uh, and bug bounties. We do, we do not we do not usually test in broad. Uh, that's... Um, You're not Andre Cronier. Uh, we, we, we usually try to bring uh, products, you know, tested uh, before when it's possible. Got it. And one last question, if I may add, do you guys have any plans for NFTs or some sort of NFT integration into the platform? Um, nothing currently. There were some discussions uh, with the growth squad to introduce some NFTs. Um, still haven't, um, you know, haven't gone uh, in in depth. Um, but you know, NFT seems to be here and and to stay. Uh, I can just assume NFTs will be also part in B protocol down the line. Very interesting. Well, that's all the main questions that I have for you today. I can open it up now. And if anyone in the audience has any questions, just unmute yourself and ask away. Hey, guys, I, I do have a question. Uh, you guys mentioned uh, earlier that that liquidation is still a very lucrative business in DeFi. Now, I'm just wondering if you guys have any stats or, or historical data uh, to show the average users that uh the average DeFi users that that it is indeed a, a very profitable uh place to to put their assets uh into yes so you know we we see kind of lending platforms especially liquidations uh, at this point in DeFi to be something very similar to where, you know, uh, DeFi DEXs were in 2017. So, so most of our benchmarks we do over CFI, right? So we, in CFI, you, has, uh, you have around $100 billion of yearly liquidations, uh, mostly in Bitcoin. Uh, the, the, you know, uh, right now the typical DeFi premium for liquidation is around 5%, right? Uh, so, you know, like 5% of $100 million, billion, uh, you know, it's, it's quite a lot. Uh, but, but more over than that, you know, this will eventually, you know, the vision here, it, it will be the engine, you know, for many applications. So the value here is not only from the pure profits, but also, you know, kind of, having this backstop as a service, 
uh, or other. So, you know, like to sum up, we, we do have, you know, stats on, on CFI liquidations. They, they are available on our white, uh, white paper. Uh, and yeah, overall, you know, right now, DeFi liquidation is, uh, premium is quite high. Uh, the problem with it mostly is that most of it is going to miners, right? So it doesn't really go to the traders. Uh, but the potential profit to be unlocked, uh, yeah, so it's like 5% out of potential, you know, multi-billion, even tens of billion uh, yearly volume. I think we can also look at the, you know, at the CFI liquidation ratio, you know, the numbers that Iran mentioned, the 100 billion a year uh, in liquidations that we can see over uh, over CFI, um, you know, it's kind of a, um, a measurement or uh, some kind of a milestone for where DeFi can scale into. Um, and I think this is, you know, today DeFi liquidations yearly, if you look at 2021 and extrapolating on you know what we've had till now is gonna be probably a little little bit a little bit less than one billion uh, yearly. Um, so it's kind of a hundred x growth uh, into CFI levels. Um, so yeah, I I can just assume you know that even if it will be less than five percent, as you know the the whole ecosystem will become more efficient. Um, still, there's kind of we're talking big numbers here. Anyone else have any other questions? Yeah, yeah. Nardi. So, uh, in in regards to integrating with other protocols and that, um, for like for users that are already on the protocol and um, wanting to do the the like one click migration to come on to be protocol. Have you guys given any thought to some sort of like gas subsidy or anything to reduce the friction um, for the cost of of migrating? So, so, so you're talking about uh, liquidity users or which kind of users exactly? Because, you know, like as a, in the future, at least, you know, when you provide liquidity to a backstop, you don't really migrate. You just deposit your DAI or LUSD or, I don't know, MIM uh, in the backstop. It is true that in our current version, we also offer maker and compound lenders and borrowers also to migrate. Uh, and there, you know, like in the past, we did have some subsidy. Right now, it's not part of the program. Uh, but for the backstop itself, if, if you want to participate, you only need to deposit. You know, so right now it's LUSD. In the future, it would be DAI and MIM as well. But it's uh, it's a good option to mention that our V1, which is still you know it's it's available and supported on our website, um, and covers MakerDAO users on it uh, A, it B and it C and WBTC vaults on Maker. Um, they all have uh, and also Compound users. Um, they all have a, a one-click button import. Um, of course, there are some gas uh, costs involved in, in such, a, such a migration, but also the benefits are there definitely now. The liquidity mining is, uh, is up and running. Um, but basically, any MakerDAO or Compound user uh, that wants to migrate and to manage their CDP uh, via B protocol can do that with just one click. Um, doesn't have to unwind their, um, their debt. They don't need to repay. Uh, in order to migrate, they will migrate, you know, their collateral with their debt uh, in in one click, basically using a widget that we have uh, as part of the of of the B protocol application. Anyone else want to add something? Okay, well, if that's it, uh, thank you very guys, thank you very much, guys, for having this AMA with us. We look forward to working with you, and we wish you luck with the project. Great, thanks yeah. for having us. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you, thank you. It was great, thank you. Goodbye, have a nice day. Bye. 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 Bye.